serves me. Eight and more one. Out of forty two. What yeah, other one of the smallest? We are the smallest. What state agencies issue regulations that uh, impact you as far as standards and what your training requirements are, behavior requirements are, et cetera? Currently, the only state agency that does anything about training is the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy. All right. And the, uh, does the Attorney General issue some guidelines? That is the Attorney General's office. That's what I thought. So there's no other agency at this at the present time involved yes. in might broadly can be considered industry standards. Well they they really don't promulgate any standards for us. What they do is they say state minimum. They come along and they say you have these state minimum hours to get your uh, certificate to be a police officer in the state of Ohio. And then uh, within the past several years, pardon me, the Attorney General has said, you know, we really should have some continuing education. And you can get that in several ways. You can get it online, uh, and you can get it through department health training, and you can get it through training offered through uh, outside agencies or training that the Attorney General puts on or online training. But there's really no, the, the Attorney General doesn't come along and say, okay, well, you've got to have a, a, a policy on use of force, or you have to have a policy on pursuits, or you have to have a policy on bias based profiling. They don't, they don't delve into that world. Does FBI issue any guidelines for local police departments as to what their standards would be recommended? No. That you're aware of? I don't know. I just want to imagine. No, they come in. If you do something wrong, if you violate somebody's constitutional rights, uh, or you um, uh, have a, a use of force issue, they can come in under the color of federal law and, and do an investigation. But they don't set any standards. Now, there are other states, I believe Kentucky is one that he has a state accrediting body that um, accredits law enforcement agencies, but, but Ohio does not have one. Is there any move in Ohio to get one? No, sir. Not the, okay. I, I just think that changes, and all of a sudden we're stuck with a change in Columbus. Well, it seems contrary to the home rule concept. Uh, yeah. Home rule's been in and out of court since 1911. Sure. <laughs> Uh, Tom, talk about, uh, just because we have a little bit of time, talk about the FBI Academy as far as um, what they have contributed, I guess is the best way to say it, what they have contributed to law enforcement and, and law enforcement standards. It seems like they, they ratchet it up, or we, we always feel as though officers and chiefs that have had some FBI training and so on are a notch above. So talk about what they have contributed to the field of law enforcement. Um, the FBI Academy is, uh, and by invitation only, a school in Quantico, Virginia. And they like to put out the numbers that one half of 1% of law, all law enforcement officers get to attend that. Um, there is an extremely rigorous background investigation before you get to go. Um, and then you, you, you are in, you are invited to go. You just don't apply and get to go. You get an invitation uh, from the from the director of the uh, FBI. Once you're there, um, you are expected to um, work. If you don't, we know what happens. Get expelled. Define um, work as you're using it. Um, you may have classroom work uh, that, that you're given. You, and you are then, you're down there.
there for, you know, when I was there it was 14 weeks, it's now 12 weeks. You are, um, it's homework. And you are expected to turn out quality homework. People that are there that are the instructors are, are FBI agents that are uh, attorneys, uh, specialists in their field, and they, uh, they know their job. They're accountants. Um, they are, in this day and age, they are terrorism specialists, accountants, uh, linguists. Um, Back when I was there, they were white collar crime specialists, budget and management specialists. So they try to stay ahead of the curve. So what's going on in the world, they change the curricula to, to meet what's going on. Um, there's a physical fitness component. Uh, you are just expected to conduct yourself as a professional. Uh, you're expected to work hard while you're there. Uh, one of the key components to that training is the uh, networking that goes on and uh, the people that you make contacts with. Um, I can relate to you that we had a, a case involving some people out of Indianapolis when I was the uh, police chief in, in Greenville. And we were just really running into a hard time finding out anything about the people. Uh, we, we didn't, the detectives didn't have any contacts. And um, one of the women that was in our class was a captain with the Indianapolis Police Department. I picked the phone up, I called her, I told her what we had. And within two hours, we had the information that we needed. So it was, it's the contacts that you make, uh, the networking that goes on, that is as valuable as the, um, I'll call it the book learning mm -hmm. that, you, that you have too. But it's like a finish, it, I want to say it's almost like a graduate course in law enforcement, or it's, it's a ratchet up. And it's a couple ratchets. Yeah, and so overall, has that had a, a of influence on law enforcement, the whole field of law enforcement, of kind of raising the bar sure. nationally. Yes, it, the, the people that go, and, and I want to sound like, well, you know, I went and that makes me somebody special. It, it, it doesn't, it just, it, it raises your awareness of how to do some things and it gives you some really good contacts mm -hmm. uh, within the FBI, within, um, law enforcement around the United States. Um, but yeah, it, it raises the bar. Um, considerably. Considerably, and um, for those people that go, um, we won't tolerate those people that don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to make that any more politically if it makes you more comfortable, you can say, you know, those in Forest Park and Springdale are other officers. You know, you have colleagues here in yes. Cincinnati, many who have gone to the FBI Academy. I know that. Right. And uh, I just thought that that's not general knowledge that I wanted you to talk about since we have a little bit of extra time so that everybody here is aware of that. Yeah. And there are other folks in the area that have gone. Mm -hmm. and. It's funny because when you, if you talk to them and you talk to people that haven't gone, there's a different, I mean, they're the, they're the same people, but there's a different air. And it's not a snooty air, but it's confidence, I think. It's a little bit more confidence because you've, you've been there, you've done that, and, and you, you know that you can uh, you can do things that you didn't think you could do when you when you left. Mm -hmm. When you left he, when you left your home, and you were gone for 14 weeks, you you came back on. When I left here, I didn't think I was going to be able to get through this, and now I know I can. Mm -hmm. Approximately how many people per class? 
<coughs> there are 250 people per class, and they come from all over the all over the world. They have more than one class going at once. They no. different sequence or just one class at a time. One class at a time. But year round. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they come, like I said, they come from all over the world. What I notice, and just from pulling together some of the chiefs and so on, is that there's an air of confidence and professionalism. It's the professional edge to me you know, that you notice with the people that have gone to it. And it is a, it, it's a highly, uh, it's a highly prized management school because uh, I know that when I came back, one of the projects we had was was a, a budget that we had. It was a complex city budget and uh, when I took it back to uh, when I became chief in, in Greenville I started utilizing that and it, it drove our finance director nutty because she said we don't do that here mm -hmm. and I said well that's the way my budget's going to look because that's the way a real budget should look and about two years later, they switched over to that. Mm -hmm. Because as I kept turning it in and driving her cuckoo with it, she saw the value of it, and they switched over to that. It was a format, mm -hmm. and they, they switched over to that format. You converted it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? I'm going to give us a five-minute break before Tony comes in, if anybody needs to get up and walk around or get a drink or go to the restroom or anything. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. If you need something else, please uh, call me. That was anybody on the committee, call me again if, if that's okay with you. If yeah. they got questions, call. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Top of seven. Seven, one to one? Yeah. Okay. Who mm. lied to me? You told me they were back ahead. Somebody lied. Oh, certainly it wasn't. Oh, okay. Well, it'd be boring if it isn't a tight game. I don't like this. People need to get their money's worth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to go home. Yeah. 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 Personal clerk, I don't mean that. It's top of the seventh, it's still one of the most of the organizations have been involved. <laughs> At least for years. Yeah. Yeah. They don't say who said what. You know, the, the committee is anonymous, the, the committee acts. So I'm, I'm just suggesting, um, I'm thinking it would make your work easier if you, know, you weren't recording who approved, made a motion to approve. I don't have any problem with that, um, but I do, as we get into discussions about articles in, in there, I would, I would ask that we don't do that. But as far as who made a motion, who approved a motion, I, I have no problem with this, or reporting even if somebody votes against the motion. Um, you know, unless, unless, and we can visit that if, if that. Well, it's, it's not a big deal. Yeah. In my work world, on proper motion, things are approved. Mm -hmm. It's not you know, sneezy move, right. grumpy second day, there was a unanimous vote. Right. You know, we just shorten it up. And, uh, what's, what it's trying to avoid is, is individual members being singled out for any, any kind of fun. Being critical, I, I love your minutes. I'm just suggesting a little confidentiality. Just what was said, not who said. <laughs> She's not even going to have Tony. I'm glad you were signed. Yeah, I'm great. No, we're just MF said. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I am. Uh, I'm quoted for questioning something. And, uh, yeah, it was a committee discussion. You're it doesn't matter. It a well, we, we won't. Yeah, we won't go into that. So the public would know. 
Ken, we won't go into that. But we, do. but but we, when we get into discussions, we will. They will be anonymous. Hi, Tony. Good evening. Welcome. Thanks. Um, we have with us uh, Chief Tony Spaeth, Fire Chief, Green Hills, and uh, he is a busy, busy guy. And that's uh, that's his uh, hobby. <laughs> his real job. Yeah. Uh, that feeds his family and so on is actually further <coughs> you know, you'd think it's, this was his real job, the hours that are put in and so on. So we're delighted that you're taking a little bit of time to come with us. So, how many years have you been fire chief? Uh, 15 years. 29 total in fire department. Mm -hmm. I'm almost as old as me. Yeah. But I'll never catch up. <laughs> I'm not going to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so have you had a chance to look through the charter? I did. Um, I actually read read it in its entirety last night. Good. And, um, good bedtime reading. Yeah, it was, it was good bedtime reading. Um, and I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't have a whole lot. I have a few questions and a few comments. That's all we need. Um, and my overall comment is that it's, it's a very good document. It's, this is how the village is run, at least in my eyes, for as long as I can remember. So, um, you know, I, I don't think there's any. Tony's opinion is that there's no drastic changes that need to be made. Uh, but I did make some notes. Um, and the version I have is more different than you guys have. But, you can um, refer to the articles and sections because we'll, we have the same ones, even though ours looks different. Um, in section 206, uh, ordinances and resolutions of council, uh, and I'm sure someone has thought about this, but I didn't know if there was going to be any mention of any sort of electronic posting of, of, of uh, minutes, village business, so on and so forth. It's just a comment that I have. So, um, and uh, section 511 is obviously uh, police and fire protection. Uh, I think that's perfect. This is it. Uh, it's, uh, it's perfect the way it's stated. You're to provide for police and fire protection, and I think that's perfect. It doesn't say how, so that leaves the window wide open from anything to what you have now to something different in the future and everything in between. So, uh, in my opinion, I would leave that as it is. Part, part of the discussion with the uh, police chief was making reference to accrediting agencies for law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have a similar thing in fire safety, fire uh, protection. No, I, there's, I know that there's some accreditation at the national level, but uh, the, 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 the cost benefit of doing that is not even remotely worth it. Well, it's special training. So. And, and in fact, I, I'm not even sure that there's any accreditation for volunteer companies. There, there, I'm certain that there is for mm -hmm. career, fully, fully career departments. Well, the training, you know, there's very right few of those even around here. The and training that our young people are getting today is tenfold more than I got 40 years ago. There, there are no accredited fire departments in the county. You still have the original wooden book. And wouldn't and, uh, <laughs> and paper hats. <laughs> <laughs> paper hats. <laughs> but nevertheless, I, I, you know, that's not something that belongs in the charter. Right. Did you guys have any questions for me with regard to fire or nothing is hot? Learn business things are going well. That's that's the intention to keep it going. You know, you never know about the future, but uh, for now things are good. And, uh, the horizon looks good, so keep things as they are. Um, section six hundred two. This is where I just have some, some questions. Uh, Finding commission.
what is the status of our planning commission? Do we have an active yeah. Yeah, planning yeah. commission? Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's mention in here of the master plan. Are, uh, are they working off of the, the, the master plan that was done like two or three years ago? Is that, is that the master plan that they're working off of? Or? Which question? Maybe it's a, that's probably a question for council. Are we working off of that master plan? Is it being followed? You know, what's the status of it? So I guess those are just questions that I have. And then uh, 605 is the tax board of review. Uh, I have to be honest with you, I, I didn't know about that. <laughs> um, but I guess my question is, is are, are all of these boards, are they, are the members of these boards published? And do we know like who's on each commission board or? And, and I'm it just, I'm, I guess I'm more of asking the question. I, I mean, I don't believe it should be in the charter, but. Um, yeah, we used to have a list, uh, yeah. and I think it went online, at least for the Planning Commission and the Zoning Board. Um, I'm not sure if uh, the Tax Board is online, but, uh, uh, you know, we used to always have a list in the downstairs office who everybody was on the. Commissions. That was something that Kathy used to be okay. posted. In most cities, do have a tax board review. Usually, three members. That way, you don't have a tie move. Right. And sole purpose is <coughs> an appeal body. If uh, yeah, it's pretty like you. Someone's upset or yeah, disagrees yeah. with the tax yeah. commissioner. Yeah. 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 If there was a question of interpretation, they usually have some kind, some leeway there. They well, yeah, make that make sense. It makes sense. That probably is an expense. Not a, so it's more of a resolution from between the taxpayer and the tax commissioner right, right. over a tax return. Or, right. Okay. Okay. Right. All right. That's fine. Uh, section 607. Um, that's just a spelling issue. That should be fireman's dependency fund. Dependency. And not dependence. It's fireman's dependency. Is there any mandatory funding rate on that? Yes. Yeah, it's um, it's administered through the state of Ohio, and they keep a certain amount of funds in there, and we pay an assessment every year. What's our assessment? It depends. It depends. It's the state gives us what the assessment is each year. Or yeah, it, there's. It, there's a pot, and they want to keep as much money, in the, a certain amount of money in the pot. I don't know what the amount is, but, and then department, all the volunteer fire departments in the state of Ohio pay into the pot. And as the pot, you know, increases or decreases in the amount of money in it based on what they pay out, then they assess the fire departments once a year, you know, so if they say there's going to be $100 in the pot and they give out 25, then they take the $25 and they divide it by the number of fire departments and you pay that amount. I think what you're looking, it's usually a couple hundred bucks a year. Okay. It's, it's not a lot of money. Yeah, I just want to make sure there's some way to continue, if we're going to have it, but it's continually funded somehow. Yeah, and, and we, in the fire, we actually pay that out of our coffers, mm -hmm. the fire department pays that. We're, we're actually required by law to, to have that okay. in the state of Ohio. And the, the payouts are for what purpose? Uh, if there's a, a firefighter killed in the line of duty, there's some uh, funds available for uh, dependent $100, children $100 a month to go child. to it's the college. It's, totally it's like a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's a hundred bucks a month per kid, and there's I think there's a small lump sum for a surviving spouse, but it's it's not a lot. Tony and his people do a much better job of protecting themselves by buying their own million dollars. <laughs> the, most, the, the most important thing that this does for the fire department is that it gives the children of this dead firefighter college education to any of Ohio state schools, and that's room and board, and that's worth wow. a heck of a lot more than $100 a month. Oh, yeah. And that's why I always recommend that the fire department continue to spend that $150 a, a year or whatever the insignificant. So the way it works is, is the Fireman's Dependency Board 
uh, meets once a year. It's uh, two members of council, uh, two fire department members, and then a, a member of the community. And if there was a firefighter death, that committee would have to come together and contact the state of Ohio and submit the paperwork and verify the validity of the, of the incident. And then that way the money could be paid out. And every, uh, the paperwork has to be submitted every year by the 31st of January. And um, the committee meets for about a 15 minute meeting and they elect a president, a secretary, and a treasurer. And they, we send the paperwork to the state and fill in that money. You also have workers comp, right? Yes, we pay the workers comp. Also have, as Nick said, we have our own. Uh, we pay uh, through VFIS, which is Volunteer Fire Insurance Services of Ohio, is our uh, life insurance policy. Makes sense. So, and we we buy what we can afford. So we increased it a couple of times. So is there any anyway. disability coverage as well, or is it um, absolute just death? Like it's there are some disability provisions in there, okay. uh, but it is mostly for. And then, of course, Booker's Comp provides for disability also as well. But, uh, and it's a self-perpetuating board? Because I, I don't see who appoints the board members. It's saying there shall be board members, that they shall perform the duties. Um, of how well, it's, it's the, board. The, mayor, the mayor appoints. The mayor appoints two council people, yeah. and then the fire department provides two people. And then the mayor, typically in the past, has chosen the the citizen person. So it's covered in village ordinances. It doesn't. Well, need revised code covers it. it. It's in Ohio. It is. Oh, it's right. Okay. In the Ohio revised code. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning right along with you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like I said. Okay. So. It's good that that's in there, though. Mm -hmm. so. Um. And then the only other question I had was I. I thought there was some protection of the commons. Is that is, it's is that is it in here? Did I just miss it? Yeah. Okay. It's in here. All right. It's it's the golf course and green. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I I remember that being in there, but you know, there. it was late last night when I read this, and I, I wanted to ask that. So it's in there. Um, certainly, I would not. It's under be sure council that. authority or something. Okay. Uh, that's good enough for me. Yeah, it's under uh, 2.5 G. Got it. Okay, I see it. Mm -hmm. That was that was all I had. All right, questions. Anything you would want to recommend or like to see, or no comment? Um, as I stated earlier, I, like I said, I think it's a very good document. It's like the Constitution of the Fire Department in the United States. I mean, it's it's worked very, very well in my own opinion. And uh, you know, outside of a few questions, changes, I, I, I would I would be very disappointed if there were major. Thank you for coming. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to have you. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Thanks. We know who to call if we have more questions from you. Same, uh, same item on when you see her. I will. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you. All right. Yeah. Tell us if there's any council members out in the hall. Okay. I doubt it, but I told them to be here if they.
what they don't do is that they don't have turkeys down in front of the I know, stores of well, Thanksgiving for your turkey raffle. They used to have live turkeys. I remember the live turkeys. I miss the live turkeys. <laughs> I miss the old fashioned turkey shoot where you shoot. Yeah, there's still some departments that do that, but we never did that. You know, bang, bang stuff. We all we didn't have a room for that. We didn't have a range for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what was the last time that we had a charter commission here? Charter and by towards the year end and review it and come back and talk about if there's things that worry us or that we need to be addressing. Um, and if so, he would appoint a, a commission. And every year they come back and even at retreats we talk about it. No, not not really, not now. You know, and so that was um, one of the processes where we talk about do we need a review. I was saying maybe putting once every 10 years. We don't need one every year. I mean, oh, you know, well, no. a charter yeah. doesn't change that much, but I think systematically, mm -hmm. for example, in the last 88 now, we have an internet. So yeah. obviously that's yeah. gonna require some changes. Right. And I think if we just put in there somewhere that there shall be a re charter review commission no less than once every 10 years or something, or pick out a number. Uh, it doesn't have to be every day or every year, so at least it comes up somewhere mandatorily for okay. somebody to worry about. Okay, we have some people here worried about this game, so we're going to get out of here in just a second. Okay, what game? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, what's, so what's the inning? Uh, bottom of the seventh. Bottom of the seventh. Bottom of the seventh. It's one to one. Still one to one. Okay, guys. Let's go. Right. You want to go? Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. We're going to meet on October, what is it, 29th, 30th, 30th. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to be ready to review. And this is an ambitious thing. So if, if we can't do it, there's nobody telling us we failed. All right, but we're going to try to review the first three articles that night. So read them closely, keeping in mind that, um, you know, we aren't going to be English majors editing for spelling and commas and quotations, but we are going to try to do a really good job with what we need to recommend to consoles. So um, we're going to come in and we'll have a process to go through and we will do it. Who brings the coffee? Uh -huh. A lot of caffeine. <laughs> we could do that if we needed. If it's in the morning, I would bring some coffee, but that late at night, yeah. I'll have my coffee before I come. I can't do that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you want to stay up until midnight. <laughs> I, I am a baseball fan, so don't, don't misunderstand. When you mention retreats and work sessions, are those considered? Meetings that are meetings of council? Yeah. Okay, so they, they were announced, they're open. posted, and yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. The first meeting of the month is generally <coughs> a regular council meeting, and then the second Tuesday of the month, or the third Tuesday of the Tuesday. month, is a work session. And so, one of the reasons that when we were statutory, we didn't have three readings. When we went to the charter, because we had switched from the council to just one meeting a month and not having two meetings. And that's one of the reasons that we went with two readings for ordinances, because conceivably it could take two months. And if we were doing three readings and only having one regular meeting a month, we could do three months before we could pass an ordinance, potentially. Um, so as, as far as conducting business of council, it's just semantics calling it a work session? No. Yeah, you can't, uh, you can't pass any legislation unless you go into a regular council meeting. So it's just like a committee meeting of a whole for everybody in the council. 
talking about whatever issues council members want to bring up. And then a retreat was uh, something that we started after you came to the board. Um, and uh, it was uh, going off to uh, a location other than here most of the time. I think we only had here once. Did we no, we never did. Saturday, like an all-day thing, and that that evolved. The work session evolved because a whole month seemed to be too far, too long to cover business that was emerging during the month, and so we called that a work session just to kind of it was it was a kind of sat back and talked about things that were going on that you needed to figure out what to do. And at that time, we didn't go, we didn't introduce any ordinances or anything. We didn't. We didn't talk that kind of business, but we really talked about everything. That police chief and the fire chief would sit in on those, and um, we called them work sessions because we really we were working the business of the village, you know, at the time. And then the retreats emerged because there was never any time for us to do any long-range planning and council meetings. There was never time on the agenda. There was never time in the meeting to do long-range planning. So that's what the retreat became an all day, you know, envisioning and working and trying to get through. Uh, trying to bring a facilitator in. Outside yeah. facilitator. Yeah. And a lot of towns do this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to understand. Yeah. yeah. Not, well, and but they, just, some of them go to bed and breakfast somewhere. It snowed heavily on almost all the floors. Yeah, I was waiting for the police chief to say it's not a shri the Shriners Convention that they go to. Well, we're it's living in an electronic right. age. So, I mean, when this charter was originally developed, we didn't have the electronic age. So you have one meeting a month, it was more than enough, and your work session. I think it's probably reached the point where it's almost have to have at least two meetings a month, maybe three. Um, one of them being a work session because too much stuff is coming up uh, too often. Uh, I think the Laws and Rules Committee went through all the ordinances that were passed this last year, and two thirds of them were legitimately emergency ordinances. Now, about one third they counted out that probably could have gone with proper planning without being an emergency. But the way things are in this world today, and the way approvals come down, and your request for funding, and everything else that has to look just like that, um, emergency ordinances are becoming more and more common, primarily because you don't have as many meetings to discuss the different things. And you can't, again, as you said, you can't do it in a, in a work session. And uh, it kind of puts the council under a gun to, effectively deal with each problem as it comes down, but you like to discuss it. And, uh, well, we're gonna go home and sleep on that. We're, we're getting Oh, we're not gonna, we're no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm <laughs> saying we're getting into the work of the, um, that we have ahead. Yeah. So um, I appreciate that, but uh, I think for tonight, what we came to do was to gather information, I think we've done. Very good. Any, other, any comments, concerns? I make a motion we adjourn. So. Still one to one? Bottom of the eighth, one to one. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <coughs> See, they're waiting for us to get that seal. They're waiting for you to come home. Yeah. They're going to make you come home. They're going to make you come to see it. That's right. So they can put them all over and be happy. <laughs> right. But you didn't do